So the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa, it's time where we look at, you know, the first conversation here, mental health awareness. And uh, the United Nations say that nearly one billion people worldwide suffer from some form of mental disorder. And that's why we're speaking this morning with experts, Josephine Ogbeinde, Ogbeinde, clinical psychologist, and Nike Ajayi, an emotional intelligence uh, therapist and family counselor as well. Ladies, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. All right, Nike Ajayi, thank you for joining us. And Josephine, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. All right, then. Uh, let me start off with you, Josephine, now. I know that we're talking about uh, mental health awareness. Uh, it's important that we understand before we begin to talk about the importance of it. Uh, can you quickly, you know, take us through what mental health is about? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Plus TV Africa. Um, really, I would say that mental health, or let me say according to, you know, the World Health Organization, they define, I'm kind of phrasing, they define mental health um, as is a state of well-being in which someone is able to identify his or abilities, the person is able to cope with the normal stresses of life, the person is able to be productive and fruitful and also contribute to his community or her community. So basically it's a state of well-being where a person is able to function optimally in whatever um, space or situation the person is. So which includes the person's thoughts, um, what are the contents of the thoughts, how the person feeling, and what are emotions that are present and what exactly the person does. Is it productive or not productive? So that's it, you know, um, what the health is. So, but in, in recent times, we have seen that, um, you know, a lot's been happening in our country, especially at a time of COVID. I mean, prior to COVID, mm -hmm. we know that people have been going through a lot and their inability to not be very productive. But you know how it is that people constantly play down, you know, what it is when you, you say that uh, you, you're not able to articulate or perform or function, um, you know, optimally. Mm -hmm. And then people begin to think that you're being overly dramatic or necessarily seeking for attention. Uh, how, how can people, how can we get to that point where we understand the need for uh, mental uh, wellness and the fact that it's important and that we don't take these people for granted when they come out you know, to air their views? I think um, by having conversations like this, because uh, I would say one of the good things that happened, one of the good things that COVID did was to actually bring to light what we've been trying to say all along, that mental health, our mental health is very, very important as much as our physical health. So what we can do to normalize these conversations, to normalize that our mental health should also be taken seriously. Having conversations like this, um, what positive is doing, you know, um what's going on on social media educating you know educating companies educating human resource personnel that it's okay if someone has a mental illness they shouldn't be stigmatized for it the same way someone can be treated for typhoid or malaria someone also can be treated for depression without you know any bias or any stigma so by having conversations like this having programs um, to educate the public that mental health should be taken seriously. All right, so um, let's have Nike Ajayi, who's a family therapist and uh, counselor, join us this morning. Uh, Nike, thank you so much for making our time to be with us and to talk about this issue. Thank you so much. Now, in May 2021, the WHO had released some statistics on mental health, indicating that the global prevalence estimated for different mental disorders. So uh, you had the issue of depression, you had anxiety, post-traumatic stress syndrome, uh, you know, symptom, if you want to say, uh, stress, among other issues. The question is, what exactly... Um, is responsible? What are the factors responsible for all of this? Because it, it doesn't look like we're just, uh, we just wake up and people just have this. It's not like it's something that you're born with. I don't know. Is it hereditary? Is it something 
that it's been triggered? What really causes all of this imbalance? All right, thank you so much. It's a huge one. And um, I, I'll, um, let me start with the data. You started with um, the World Health Organization, and there's some varying data we can data we can confirm actually on the internet. Um, we need to understand the source of energy we are trying to address, and so that's why we started with the data. And I realized that um, I couldn't get this thought at this point. It's something that I said on the Google on Google several that 90 or 90% 90 of our health issues stem from mental health problems. What is this that whatever takes us to the hospital for one treatment or the other, the base point, the root, is a mental health issue. Out of this 90%, about 85% of about 80% of it is from emotional issues. And let's come down to us in Nigeria, Africa, and about extension to the US. Nigeria, in Nigeria, one um, the the statistics of doctor to patient, an average of one to five thousand. A doctor to five thousand, five thousand. What this is telling us is that many times we we'll pay attention to physical health issues without paying attention to the mental health issues. And the mental health issues is a combination of social health, psychological health, social well-being, the way we relate. And what this one tells us is that until we pay attention to those aspects of our life, which actually take up to 80 to 90 percent of our total well-being, we may not find a solution around us to the society. So that's one of the a, a major factor that is a cause of this mental health issue. Secondly, moving from the issue of a non-digitalized environment to a digital, digitalized environment, like um, my colleagues here today and um, the guys in the studio talked about, a lot of things are postponed from COVID to postponed. Many, we are, we are struggling to move from the physical interaction and expense to virtual. And that one also comes with its challenges. Prior to now, what people have to pay an interaction that is very physical and a combination of cultural and religious things into the physical. And what do this do? Because, you know, there's, there's a level, there's a limit. A limit to the empowering or on disempowering. A limit of our culture telling us not to speak out. A limit of some aspect of our religious mindset. Trying to stigmatize people or society stigmatizing people. Now, the virtual experience is that we've been asked to speak out, to encourage those having mental issues to speak out. But the next, next challenge is speak out to who? These are the issues we are now having. Who are they talking to? Are you splitting out in a social media space, special virtual space, to people that do not even have any form of awareness, to people that do not have any information, to people that are not professional, and they make situations worse. So these are the things that we need to um, address, the two extremes of not opening up, and opening up the wrong or people that cannot actually not help. So there are dimensions to this that has to do with professional intervention. Because therapeutic will be medical. Thank you. All right, let's have, uh, let's have Joe Swain back now. I mean, I, I would like that we have this conversation, you know, as simple as it can be so that everyone can understand, I mean, we can understand uh, ex what, it, what we're talking about now. Because, you know, usually when you talk about mental health, when you talk about depression and all of this, there's always a tendency of people thinking that you're crazy. When we talk about mental health, most times people think that we're talking about 
those who are on the streets, like you have taken your clothes off and you are so, you're acting very crazy. And that's it. Like, I don't want to use that particular word because it's, uh, you know, very derogatory at the end of the day. So that's why I'm trying to just stay simple. But um, you have uh, the United Nations here, including Double H, or making pointers to some of the issues. And we know that for sure, in society, you have the haves and haves not. And resources are not distributed equitably. And so you would have inequalities in our society. And so you have people who are, what exactly, is this also part of the reason why people um, you know, sleeping to that state where they're not okay because of the fact that, I mean, the basic things that they need or they don't have equal opportunity just as, you know, some members of the society because we have different strata. Uh, Josephine, I'd like that you share your thoughts on that. And if that's the case, how can people uh, manage and survive? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, just to follow up, from the question you asked me, Kayla, what exactly causes, um, you know, mental illnesses and how, like you said, how we can cope with these um, situations. So I would just categorize them into two major reasons. So that's one, the genetic reasons. So if there's family history of um, mental illness, so that could make someone, and that could predispose someone into having a mental illness. And then there's the environmental factors, which um, was what Nikkei talked about, what he talked about, the emotional aspect, the family aspect, social, financial, and all of the things that could cause, you know, um, someone to develop a mental illness. So for your question, how exactly can one cope that fight, if I could use example, financial crisis, financial issues going on, yes, can these things cause, um, can someone passing through a financial um, situation of financial crisis caused the mental illness. Yes, definitely. And in you know Africa's uh, situation, we see that in our country, we see that some people don't all the resources are not evenly distributed. But whatever the case, how can we cope? For it? one is, I would just say, how can that person harness what he or she, what he or she has? So um, the little that you have, how can you harness that and make a living out of it? Yes, it sounds a bit, mm, you know what I'm saying, but to be very honest, that's it. You can't say, okay, you should go and steal or you should go and do something that is wrong because that itself is not correct. But making do with what you have, developing your own skills, and then you know, making that into um, something, a living, making that you know, into a living. So take an example of what happened during COVID. A lot of people... Um, lost their jobs, but a certain category of people, or most people, you know, went down the, the continuum of mental health. And then another category of people realized that, okay, this is a problem, but how can I solve it? So that's why a lot of things started going on, IT, IG lives. A lot of people took their skills online. Okay, so just about you realizing this is a problem, I have a financial problem, but what do I have and how can I harness that to uh, address my current problem so that I can cope, effectively cope in a good way so that I don't develop, you know, a mental health illness. So are, are there symptoms for, you know, mental uh, illness? Now, we know we're talking about, you know, awareness for mental health, but... Uh, when you talk about mental health, are there symptoms? If you are not in a good situation, I mean, you're not in a good position, are there symptoms that you begin to exhibit? What should we be looking out for? Yes, definitely. The same way um, we have symptoms for different illnesses, we have symptoms for different uh, mental illnesses. So different mental illnesses, we have depression, we have anxiety disorders, we have post-traumatic stress disorder. So we just have, you know, a couple of mental health illnesses. So let me just take one, for example, the common one that a lot of people, we, it's like a misconception, oh, if I'm feeling sad, oh, I think I'm depressed. <laughs> and oh, that's not depression. So one of the major um, symptoms of depression is um, low mood. Okay, so there's a feeling of low mood, a feeling of um, sadness. 
okay and then there's also lack of energy or lack of interest in what you've originally been interested in okay there could be an increase or decrease in appetite there could be fatigue tiredness even when um there's no reason for you to you know get tired and then these symptoms are consistent so you can't just say okay just one day and then you're feeling things and then you say you're you know, for at least about three weeks you must have felt these symptoms at least three weeks and mental illnesses must be diagnosed by a professional not just anyone so there needs to be an assessment, there needs to be sometimes tests that take to confirm you know, the diagnosis. So yes, there, there, there are symptoms for mental illness, and I just give that for um, depression. So what, what's the difference between depression and anxiety then? Okay, so um, depression, like it's where I just defined, which is a mental illness, which has the symptoms of lack of interest, low mood, um, tiredness, increase in fatigue, and anxiety or anxiety disorder will have a difference is the body's response to a stressful situation. So, for example, but which now has physiological symptoms. So, there could be an increase in heart rate, there could be um, palpitations, there could be um, distractions or loss of concentration. So, but that's a thin line because they could cooperate. All right, depression and anxiety could for at the same time because someone with an anxiety disorder could express these symptoms of depression. Okay, so yeah, it just depends. And then, mm. yeah, all right, then let, 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 let's have Nikkei Ajayi, uh, who's a family expert and ter uh, therapist counselor, come in now. It's a yeah. good thing that you, I mean, you're a family uh, therapist mm -hmm. and you, you're a counselor. In all of this, because every individual is part of a family, and of course, they make a, lot, a larger society, they belong to groups and different. What support can be provided for those who are going through some sort of, uh, you know, mental illness and stress? What kind of support can family, you know, different groups? I mean, when you talk about family, and not necessarily biological family, but what kind of support can be given to persons like this? For instance, now. Uh, very heartbreaking. I mean, may her soul continue to rest in peace, Adame. Uh, we know that prior to this time, not necessarily that that's the reason why she died, but she had talked about the fact that she was going through um, some mental stress or illness, and she talked about it. And she also talked about the fact that she was being sued for not being able to um, go and perform her duty. We, we, we know that she is an entertainer. But for the fact that she lost her daughter, that probably would have taken a toll on her. And she was not able to live up to expectation. But what kind of support can we provide to people who are going through, um, you know, some kind of mental illness, stress, whatever it is you want to target us? Thank you so much for that. And um, may I just to correctly. It's very sad. And it's sad because... This is the way that makes everybody joy, makes us laugh, makes us happy. And she was almost, um, I won't say she was literally helpless, but maybe helped you all the time. But whatever happened, it really made a lot of us. So like you said, I like how you start. And um, the family may not totally be blood like so if you are a family to somebody that is challenged or you have seen the signal, just like just said, first place to start is a place of awareness. A place of awareness, which was what I just rightly talked about. Those traits, and like you said, some of those traits could be um, could be interrelated and uh, we may not fully really know as professionals. But as lay mother, family members, those that can see that passing through this, one of the things you will check out is what is the usual, the normal relationship, interrelationship, the personal relationship of this person? What kind of, um, how does he or she is or her life? And that's what those people say that it could be dual, it could appear anyway. 
for example, somebody that was that has always been very bubbly, very extroverted, but suddenly becomes um, quiet. Then somebody needs to know that something is wrong. But if you've not heard from somebody in a long while, please, it's time to check out the person. And in interacting, in relating with him or her, you will observe the, kind, the way the body, the, the body language of the person, how he or she responds. These are things that a layman should to check out if you're a member of such a person. And, and it's important because we are all, it appears we're all so busy that we want to have a deep, a deep interaction with uh, one another. This is the time to really pay attention. How do this look like? Pay attention to people around you. Pay attention to your loved one. Pay attention to your friends. And there could be different kinds of factors. The work, workplace environment family, there is a religious factor, a, psycho, a, a, a psychological aspect of our life has to do with our mental health. And part of our mental health, part of the psychological aspect of our life deals with the spiritual. Whatever spirituality means to you as a person, the people in your circle, your religion um, and family, to be able to also know what to look out for. An average person, an average leader should be trained up with the level of age treatment, a first oh. level awareness of what to look out for. When somebody you see, we, can, we need to go the, now. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but as time goes on, we would definitely always have this conversation and we look forward to having you always, you know, to be available to share your thoughts with us and also use your opportunity to educate everyone. We we'll appreciate you, Nikki Ajayi, for being part of the show this morning. Thank you. And Josephine Ogbeide, thank you so much. Uh, I hope I got your pr the pronunciation of your name correctly. Yeah, baby. Thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. Uh, it's been a great time talking to you too and uh, beautiful ladies right there. Uh, Nikkei Ajayi is a family life therapist and a uh, counsellor and you also have Josephine McBede who is a clinical psychologist. Ladies, thank you so much and that's it. Please, uh, let's uh, you know, pay attention to ourselves and pay attention to those who are around us. That's it on uh, the topic this morning. When we return, we'll be looking at the, your assembly as they appoint a new deputy governor for your state. Stay with us.